Today I'd like to talk about generators and groups. A generator is a type of effect where if you come over here, you'll see the standard generators that come with DaVinci Resolve. Essentially what they do is like generate a background that you may want to use in your video. A common one is just to create a solid color, which defaults to black. Let's just change it here. And, but they also have a, a few other things. For example, let's say you're doing some calibration and you want to do some maybe equipment testing. Here's different gray steps. And they even have color bars and uh, other nifty things. Let's say you want to make your own background. This is something, for example, that we've done with the Python videos that we've made. We have a few different generators, like one will display this bluish computer-like background, or just a light blue, or even a background that has a middle column. So today I'd like to show you how to create these. And in doing so, we're going to have to talk about groups of nodes in Fusion. So let's hop over to the Fusion tab. The first thing I'd like to do a quick reminder is, let's say you bring in a node, let's say a background node, and let's say we just want to have a quick um, mask. So we're gonna take our background, we're gonna make it a blue color, and there we go. So here in this composition, we have three nodes or three tools as uh, they're often called. There isn't a media in, but we have a media out, a background, and a rectangle for masking. If you ever want to save one node or all of the nodes, what you want to do is select the nodes that you want to save. You can select them all individually. You could just lasso and select them all or anything like that. And once you have all the nodes that you want to save selected, you right click, go to settings, and you can save all as. And let's just give this a name. This is saving nodes. What this does is it creates a setting file. A setting file here is, I'm looking at the file not through a, a traditional text editor, I'm using Visual Studio Code, but if you open it, here is the saving nodes.setting file. And what it contains is it contains a description of all the nodes in your composition. So here we have three nodes, and uh, it even saves the location of the nodes. The names aren't terribly interesting right now, so let me change that. So I'm going to call this cropper since it's kind of a mask and it crops the thing. And this is a blue background, blue BG, and this is going to be a video out. Why not? Now, if we, let me just select them again, settings, save all as, we'll just overwrite the saving nodes. There we go. Now, when you come over, you will see the setting files have a certain format. It's not a standard computer programming for, format as far as I can tell. It looks like it's something that's more common in video production, but you'll have your name of a tool or a node and what type it is. So we have a cropper, which is a rectangular mask, and then it has the parameters that we may have set. We have a video out, which is the name of our media out tool. And then we have a blue BG node. That's the name and the type of the node is background. So this is how you select nodes and make one. You just select them and save it as. And if you ever want to reuse it, you can just drag and drop a setting file into Fusion, and there you go. Now, this is okay. Like if you have a complicated setup where you know on every single video you're going to want to go in and tinker with the layout or the composition, maybe this is great. But it is often very helpful to say, while you're in the editor cut page, just come over to the generators section, grab a background you want to work with, and drop it in and continue your work. And that's what I'd like us to be able to do. Now, we're gonna do this in an experimental way, meaning I'm not gonna just do it the correct way and say, imitate this. I actually wanna show you kind of the process I went through and how it led me to understand setting files better. And also, I just really started to kind of get what Fusion is doing and how you're able to kind of customize this list of effects because being able to create your own customizable effects, especially when they have things like being able to do a quick preview by scrubbing or bringing it over here, like let's bring over paper and even having your own control tools really is a time saver. And that's when you really start kind of leveling up your production flow is when you start to create your own custom tools, uh, if you're not able to find one that works or you're not even able to buy one that works. So, Let's come over to Fusion, and let's say, we'll start simple, we have a background node. Let's call this background node Pretty Color. 
right now. Uh, let's give it a color so we can tell that it actually is present as opposed to maybe we're just not sure if we're getting uh, what type of output. Let's just pick a lavender color and save it. it. Has red, green, and blue. That's great. Let's say you want to save this color because you love it and you want to be able to use it again. Just highlight it, right click, setting, save as. This is interesting. There's only one node here. And so the save all as is no longer there. So if you select both of them, right click, settings, there's a save all as. It's only if there's more than one. So I'm going to pick the pretty color node, settings, save as, and I'm going to call this, actually, I'm not going to change the name. It's pretty color dot setting, save. Let me bring it up in Visual Studio Code. We have pretty color dot setting. And you can see the name of the node is pretty color and the type of the node is background. And here are the red, green, blue values. This view info is the position of the node inside the node editor and everything else. Now, how can we make this reusable? Let's come back here to resolve, go up to help and go down to the documentation. This is something I hadn't really looked at for the longest time, but it's pretty helpful. Click on developer and that's going to bring up on your file system the place where you can go and start to find readme files with more details about how to do certain things. We're interested to learn about Fusion templates, which consists, for example, of generators, transitions. There's a readme.txt file. Open that and let's make it full screen. This is a little bit of a technical read, but once you've been using Resolve and Fusion for a while, you'll read this and it will just make a lot of things start to click. If you scroll down, what I want to point out to you is here, template paths. When you want to save one of your setting files, where do you put it? And they let you know if you're working on Mac, Windows, or Linux, where you put the setting file so that it will show up in the edit and cut page. So if you're on the cut page, you bring up effects. Here you have video audio generators. Let's say you want your generator to appear here, our pretty color generator. Or if you're on the edit page, you want it to appear there. I'm on Windows and everything is set up to go through a specific user. So here is the path that I'm going to have to navigate to to put the setting file. So let me show you that. Okay, here I'm in Windows Explorer. I'm going to start off with users and go to Socratica and let's come down here. There's the app data folder. We go next to roaming, then Blackmagic Design, DaVinci Resolve, Support, Fusion, Templates, and Edit. There we go. This is where you put the setting file. Notice there's four folders, effects, generators, titles, transitions. If you come back to the interface, you'll see under the toolbox, you'll have effects, generators, titles, and video transitions. So there's two types of transitions. You use Fusion to make video transitions. We'd like this to appear in the generator section. So if you come over here and click on generators, this is where we would like to see our pretty color generator. So what I'm going to do now is go into the generators folder. Right now there's nothing there. And I'm going to take and copy the prettycolor.setting file and paste it here. Now it hasn't showed up yet. We're just going to have to do a quick restart. So let me do that now. So I'm going to quit. Okay. And we're back. We're in the edit page. If we come over here and select generators, scroll down, you will see there is a pretty color option, a pretty color generator. We drag and drop it in and no color. Let's hop over to Fusion and see what's going on. Well, here is the pretty color node, but notice it wasn't co connected to the media out. That's the problem. The media out is what the Fusion template here, what the Fusion composition is displaying, and there's nothing being fed into it. So if we just were to take this and connect it, come back, there we go. You can see that now we have the color that we made. And that's a little frustrating. It's like when I first did that, I didn't understand, well, why is it not just automatically connecting that to your media out? That's a bit of a disappointment. So let me show you the solution that I found. And if anyone knows other solutions, I'd be very interested to know. So what I will do is to show you how to get it to appear, I'm going to actually go and create another generator that's a little more complex. So we'll just leave this over here. We don't need to remove it. In fact, let me go ahead and bring up the media out. We don't need to get rid of that either because we select which nodes we want to export. So let's say we would like to have a blue background and like a yellow framing. So let me bring in a background and I'm going to rename this blue BG for blue background. 
and I'm going to change the color too. I picked a nice blue and save the color code. And let's display this on the right panel. Next, I'm going to make a nice ellipse. So I'm going to bring in here a shape of an ellipse, and then I'm going to have the ellipse be yellow. And so I need to make this yellow. And this is going to be our curly border. Let's feed that in. And the yellow code, that color code that I'm going to use, I have right here. Paste that in. So I'd like to display the yellow on the right and the blue on the left. So for the yellow, we first would like to change the shape of the ellipse a little bit. There we go. And let's change the height. And let's not have it be solid. And let's increase the width of the border. And let's make it a little bit softer. We now want to put this little yellow border on top of the blue background. So I'm just going to take this and we're going to do a merge. Take this yellow, merge it on top of the blue. Let's display the merge onto the right. There we go. It's nothing fancy. It's not going to win any awards, but it's something. And the more, most important thing with regards to this demonstration is there's more than one node. So if we went and selected all these nodes, saved it, went over to in fact, why don't we do that? Selected all the nodes, right click, settings, save as, and this is going to be called an elliptical BG. Now, we have this elliptical BG file, and it has a yellow background node, a curly border ellipse mask node, it has a merge, which we didn't rename, it has a blue BG, which is a background node, and it has a media out node. Okay, that's good. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the elliptical BG setting, paste it over here. And the idea that what we're testing here is that, okay, we included a media out in this setting file. So now when we restart resolve and try out this generator, will it now display, or are we gonna have the problem where it's not connected to a media out? Let's try. Okay, here we are. We came over to the edit page, look at the effects, scroll down, and you can see there's the elliptical background. I'm not optimistic because when you do a little mouse scrub over it, it's still black. But let's bring it down and just take a look at what happens here. So it's all black. If we go over to the Fusion page, look what happened again. So we have the display nodes here, which they all work just fine, but they're not connected to the media out. So for this to work, instead of getting black, we have to just go ahead and connect that. And now we're in business again. So that didn't work either. But if you bring up the file and you look, what this has is it has the four nodes that we had, a background, the yellow background, elliptical mask, a merge, and a blue background. It had a media out, but when we drag and drop the generator into the timeline, it was there, but it wasn't connected. So here is what works. And I've, you know, you may have seen a tutorial or read online how to do this. And so I'll show you what that solution is, but now this might give you a little better background as to understand why you do that, or at least what quirk of resolve requires you to do that. So we're going to come back here to fusion. I'm going to select the non output nodes and I'm going to group them control G. So we now have a group. Let me go ahead and rename this group. I'm going to call it ellipse generator. Now I'm going to right click on the, the group, come up to settings and save as. It was singular. It's just one tool here. It's the group. I'm going to call this ellipse generator group. So we'll be able to tell the difference between this. And like before, I'm going to take the ellipse generator grouped and put it into that folder that we saw in the readme file as to where you put your setting files for it to appear inside resolve. And then we're going to do once again, another resolve restart. Okay, here we are. Let's come back over to the edit page, bring up the effects, go to generators, scroll down, and we have, we tried ellipse BG, it didn't work. Here's the ellipse generator, and hey, we moved the cursor over it, and now it looks like it's gonna work. Drag and drop that into your timeline, and there you go, it works. Now, we don't really have any controls over on the generator, on the inspector, on to the right here. And that's something will be covered when talking about macros. But for now, we're talking about generators and groups. And what I'd like to kind of end with is understand why did it display now when we group those nodes? What are we seeing here? If we come over to the Fusion tab, 
Look what happens. When we bundled up this together, we saved the group. We didn't include the media out. But DaVinci Resolve went ahead and created a media out and attached it for us. So let me show you what is responsible for that. If you come over here to the Ellipse Generator group, you're going to see something called the Ellipse Generator group operator. Okay, so that is the group that holds everything that we have previously. We have a list of tools, a list of order tools. We have blue background merge, etc. But this section here is new. The part that's new is this group operator. And what the group operator contains is it contains something called outputs. And it's this output that I believe, I'm 95% sure, if I'm, if, if I'm not correct me, it's the existence of this output listing that will allow Resolve to take this setting file and go ahead and wire, a, wire it up with a media out. That's why you may have read or seen other examples where people will take a group and export the group. And if you don't do that, if you export all the nodes with the media out, it's not connected. If you export just the ellipse and background stuff, it'll create a media out for you, but it won't be connected. But if you group the nodes together and save that group into a setting file, what it includes is this output section. Then when you drag and drop the generator into your timeline, it will go ahead and wire it up with a media out so you can start using it. That gives you a pretty uh, useful effect already. So that is, if you mouse over this effect, you can see a profile, drag and drop it in, and it already works. One last thing that might be missing, well, there's two things actually. One is this icon. It would be good if the icon gave you an idea of what this generator will look like. And next is going to be the controls over here. We're going to talk about both of those when we talk about macros. So when you talk about macros and bundling things together, you're going to learn how to create the little icons to go with whichever tool that you create and how to customize the interface over here. But just to recap, when you save nodes and resolve, they go to a settings file. And to use a settings file in resolve, you just drag and drop it in. But in order to make your setting file available inside the resolve interface, you have to make sure you save it in the right place. And where do you save it? You go to this readme file and remember the readme file, you go up to help, documentation, developer, and you click into Fusion Templates and open it there. When you open that and you scroll down, you're gonna find a section on template paths. And this is going to give you the place to go in order to know where to put your setting file so that it appears in the uh, Resolve interface. You do not have to put them there. You can put them anywhere you want, but if they're not here, the only way you'll be able to use them is to go to Fusion, open up the folder where your uh, setting file is, and drag it in. So there you go. This is how to make a gen generator using grouped nodes. And the next step is now that you're starting to kind of get a feel for setting files, grouping things like that, the next step is to turn this into a macro with an icon and making sure it appears in the right place in your toolbox. That's all for now, and I will see you in the future.